It's the show that magicians around the globe don't want you to see. The Masked Magician is back, out of hiding, daring to expose the world's most highly guarded secrets. You'll find out how they perform amazing appearances, death-defying escapes, baffling levitations, astounding vanishes, mind-blowing sleight of hand, and impossible illusions. No magician is too famous, no trick too big, no secret too sacred. The magician's code will be forever broken on magic's biggest secrets finally revealed. Magician pulls back the curtain and exposes the amazing secrets to making a gorgeous girl pass from one sealed wooden barrel into another, levitating a lovely lady, then vanishing her into thin air, creating a parade of beautiful women from out of the blue. The tricks that have made street magicians famous. Penetrating a car through solid glass. And surviving underwater without drowning in front of millions for 18 death-defying minutes. And much more, right now, on Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed. For his first illusion tonight, the magician will demonstrate one of the classics of magic. It dates back to the days of Houdini, when nearly every theater in the country featured live stage magicians instead of movies. Originally called through the eye of a needle, the trick uses these two solid oak wine barrels that are secured into sturdy wheeled stands. We'll get to that large bullseye in a minute. Two of the magician's assistants enter, carrying steel rods. The magician takes one and shows us that the rod is solid and then threads it through the holes at the front of the empty barrel. He takes another rod and does the same. Now for the next rod. As we can see, these pieces of tubular steel are forming a cage-like barrier across the front of the barrel. Now for the last rod. Again, it's solid and impenetrable. The cage is complete. We now turn our attention to the other barrel and another beautiful assistant. Charming. She moves to the back of the empty barrel and climbs inside. Even more charming. Looks like a barrel of fun. Here's where the bullseye comes in. The two assistants spin the barrel and the girl so that the magician can place the solid steel bullseye over the back end. sealed tight. Another assistant enters with an identical bullseye, again made of solid steel. The girl gives us a wave and the magician seals her inside with the steel plate. It can't be comfortable, but he's had her in much trickier positions than this. The barrels are now secured face to face. The one on the left containing the girl. The one on the right, empty. 
but caged off by the steel rods. The assistants spin the barrels so that we can see from all sides that there's nothing sneaky going on. From a hole in the top of the left barrel, the girl's fingers appear. The magician has a gift for her, this red silk handkerchief. She takes it. In an instant, it appears through the top of the other barrel. Impossible. Yet, there it is, and there are her fingers. This bears further investigation. The barrels are separated, and there's the girl behind the steel bars, just like a cunning cat in a cage. But how did she get in there? So how did the magician make his assistant travel from one barrel to the next, through the steel plate and solid steel rods, instantly appearing to defy the impossible? Here are the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician demonstrates that the steel rod is solid and free from gimmicks before he threads it through the holes in the barrel. Notice that he does not show off the second rod. That's the first secret. This rod has been constructed with a spring at the center and two other points, which makes the rod flexible. As he inserts this rod, he's careful to grip it at the center, covering the joint with his hand and preventing it from bending as it's threaded into place. Both of the center bars are designed with these springs, allowing them to be spread apart wide enough for the girl to pass through. Now we know how she gets through the bars, but what about the solid steel bullseye that seals her inside the other barrel? The clever bullseye design conceals another secret. As we can see, there is a circle cut out in the center of the plate. This red and white bullseye plug is held in place by magnets. As we see here, the plug easily pops out and into the barrel. As the audience is distracted by the assistants, I mean by the assistants spinning the barrel, the girl inside is removing the magnetic plug and squeezing feet first through the trick spring-loaded bars. This is where practice and a willing assistant are critical. These secret angles show her path from one barrel into the next. It's a tight fit, but judging by her costume, she's used to such things. Once inside, she waits for the red handkerchief, which is the key to selling the speed of the illusion. Remember how it went in one hole and appeared a second later through the other? Here's how it happens so quickly. There's a second handkerchief. Before the trick began, the girl concealed it in her very tight costume. We never noticed, but she had it with her the entire time. When the magician hands her his handkerchief through one hole, she's ready with her smuggled handkerchief, poised to push it through the hole in the second barrel. This creates the convincing illusion that the same handkerchief has traveled from one barrel to the next at lightning speed. Now she immediately replaces the painted bullseye plug, and as the magician prepares to separate the barrels, she quickly stashes his red handkerchief through a hole and into the first barrel. The two barrels are separated, and she appears to have passed right through the metal plate and steel rods. An impressive classic trick. And now you know the secrets. Coming up next, the secrets to an impossible street magic trick that makes a playing card penetrate solid glass. Levitating a lady who disappears in midair. Creating beautiful women in a flash. Then, find out how the magician survives underwater, breaks a world record, and cheats death on national TV. Here's a trick that was presented by Harry Houdini. In fact, a version of it was performed in a famous movie based on his life. The magician shows an empty table and a black cloth. The cloth is also empty with no gimmicks or hidden pockets on either side. The magician goes to great lengths to prove the cloth is innocent. He makes a few magical gestures in the air and drapes the cloth over his arm. Looks like he's made something appear under that cloth. He puts it on the table and reveals 
a large fishbowl complete with live goldfish. Amazing. So how did the magician make the bowl of live goldfish appear from thin air just like Houdini did? Here are the secrets. The magician begins by showing us there's nothing unusual about the cloth. There isn't. When he drapes it over his arm, it looks like he's making the fishbowl appear, but he hasn't. From this angle, we can see that he's merely draping the cloth over his arm and acting like something is appearing beneath it. But if the bowl isn't under the cloth, where does it come from? The secret here is in the table itself. This circular tablecloth is concealing the bowl. While it looks like an empty table from the front, from the back we can see the bowl is actually hidden inside this fake tablecloth. When we first see the table, we don't assume anything is out of the ordinary. The magician is quick to draw our attention away from the table and to the cloth. But this table contains another secret. Beneath the bowl is a weighted duplicate tablecloth that is collapsed by means of a drawstring. A simple pull and the duplicate cloth is collapsed up to the tabletop. This drawstring is held in place by the heavy fish bowl. From above, we can see the string through the bowl. Next, the fake tablecloth is placed over the bowl concealing it and the small bit of weighted cloth below. When the magician covers the table, he's actually lifting the bowl, releasing the drawstring and the weighted cloth below. He pulls off the fake cloth and reveals the fish bowl. Since the weighted cloth is dropped down to the same length as the fake cloth that covered the bowl, it appears that the table hasn't changed. See? Same size table. But how does the magician dispose of the fake tablecloth? From behind, you can see that he simply tucks it under the large black cloth and then throws it on the ground. The audience doesn't even bother to look. Goldfish surprise, just like Houdini used to make. Next, the magician will present a truly impossible illusion that street magicians have performed on TV. Normally, they pull a spectator out of the crowd, but the magician will use his assistant. I don't blame him. She seems up for the challenge. He displays an ordinary deck of playing cards and fans them for the girl. He tells her that he wants her to select one of the cards at random, asking her to say stop whenever she wants as he riffles the deck. Stop. That is her chosen card, the king of clubs for this beauty queen. She places the card back into the deck as the magician shields his eyes. He shuffles the cards, making any chance of finding her card hopeless. He throws the deck against a solid plate glass window. Miraculously, one card is stuck to the glass. Look at that, the king of clubs. But wait, it's on the opposite side of the glass. He's not only found her card, he caused it to penetrate the solid window. The magician enters the room and retrieves her card from the inside of the window. Now that is an incredible trick. And one that gives street magicians the credibility they need to get girls like this. I have to know his secret. So how does the magician, in plain view of his spectator, make a chosen card pass through the plate glass window? Here are the secrets. The magician shows his volunteer a deck of cards and asks her to make a random selection. The first secret is that the selection isn't random at all. Before the trick began, the magician took a pair of scissors and sliced off the top of one card. This card will be his marker. Since it's now a quarter inch shorter than the rest of the cards, it will be easy to find. He places the marker in front of the card he wants the girl to select, in this case, the king of clubs. When he riffles the deck for the volunteer, the marker allows him to stop at the king. 
See? The space created by the short marker card automatically stops the riffle at his pre-selected king of clubs. A simple and foolproof way to force a card on a volunteer. Now we know that he forces the king of clubs on the girl, but how does he make it pass through the glass window? Making sure she takes the forced card is the first critical secret. Here's the next. Before the illusion began, the magician obtained an extra king of clubs. One card was placed behind the short marker card. The other was handed to an accomplice, who went off to hide on the other side of the glass window. There's the accomplice, and here's how she hides. The next secret is this container of clear wax. A small ball of this wax acts as an adhesive, allowing the face of this card to stick to the glass. As the volunteer places the card back in the magician's deck, the magician is careful to distract her for a few seconds. This is when the hidden accomplice takes the duplicate card and sticks it to the window with the wax. Then, the magician throws the deck at the exact spot where the card was placed by the accomplice. From this backstage angle, we can see that the card is in place well before the magician throws the deck. From this high angle, we can see the timing of the accomplice and how the magician keeps the volunteer looking at him until the cards hit the glass. The incredible card through window isn't so incredible when you know the secrets. Now the magician will present another classic illusion that has confounded audiences since it was invented in 1902. To perform it, he'll need the help of his lovely assistants. Here's one now. As always, she's eager to please. And here come two more. They're quite pleasing, too. The magician casts a spell over his assistant, who immediately gets ready for action. The other assistants remove a sheet from a low bench, allowing her to take a seat. They raise the sheet as she stretches back and lies straight across the length of the bench. They cover her with a sheet and stand by while the magician continues to cast his spell. Watch. The girl is floating off the table. Higher and higher, she floats into the air. Below. The magician waves his arm to prove there's nothing supporting her. He takes the sheet and she's gone. Disappeared in midair by magic. Now you know why this illusion is a classic. So, how did the magician make his assistant rise up into the air, then vanish without a trace? Here are the secrets. When the assistant enters, she's placed under a spell and takes her position on the bench. Of course, it's not a real spell, and that's not an ordinary bench. Cleverly concealed are flaps of spandex fabric that match the top of the bench. They disguise a secret compartment below. The compartment is big enough to hold the assistant quite comfortably. We see her sit down onto the bench, then the other assistants raise the sheet. As soon as she is hidden from view, the assistant quickly slips into her secret compartment and closes the spandex flaps. From above, we can see how swiftly she gets into her concealed position. But if she's hidden inside the bench, how does it appear that she's still on top, covered by the sheet? Hidden behind the table is a fine wire body form that's bent into the shape of the reclining girl. The wire form takes the place of the assistant and is impossible to detect when covered by the sheet. Very thin black wires are attached to the head of the form and the feet. They run up to a pulley system concealed in the rafters and down to another assistant who is hidden off stage. Nice. When the sheet is raised, the assistant climbs into the bench and the offstage girl manipulates the rope. This raises the body form, which takes the place of the assistant who's supposed to be lying on the bench. With the sheet on top, no one is any the wiser. When the magician appears to be making the assistant rise, 
It's actually the body form under the sheet, being pulled up by the thin black wires. Even from this backstage angle, the wires are difficult to see. From above, we can see how the pulleys are raised, taking the form up with them. But with the body form suspended by wires, how does the magician make it disappear when he removes the sheet? Here's another secret. When the sheet is pulled, the form is lifted higher into the air. The careful timing of lighting and camera movement hides the body form from view. From this angle, we see it go. Making a girl levitate and vanish is simple. Now that you know the secrets. Coming up next, the magician creates a bevy of beauties from thin air. And then, he attempts to break a death-defying world record without ending up in a watery grave. You won't believe how it's done. Next, the magician has an illusion for us involving this empty pedestal. As we can see, there's nothing behind, above, or below. For some reason, these tricks are always more interesting when the female assistants are around. Well, we'll have to make do with what we have here. Unless the magician can help out with a little magic. He invites his male assistants to raise a large sheet on top of the pedestal. Let's see what happens. A few of those famous magical gestures and he commands the sheet to be lowered. Presto! That's what we were waiting for. A beautiful girl from head to toe. That's one sure way to brighten up a warehouse. The sheet goes back up. Maybe he's trying for number two. We're about to find out if he has the magic touch. He does. This trick is a real crowd pleaser. And here's a lingering shot of the girl, just to prove she's real. If she weren't, could he do this? He's good, but he's not that good. The sheet goes back up. Now let's see if the third time is the charm. Some more magical gestures are in order. And there she is. The third time is the charm. And the charming. This is what happens when you put women on a pedestal. The results are amazing. So how did the magician conjure three beautiful women from thin air and put them on a pedestal? The secret is that he gets by with a lot of help from his friends. Beneath the stage, a small army of men are operating some complex equipment to pull off this elaborate trick. The second the sheet is raised, the backstage team goes into action. This man-powered elevator sends the woman up through a shaft to the top of the pedestal. But the pedestal appears to be very narrow. It contains yet another secret. A concealed stagehand releases a mechanism which expands the pedestal and allows the girls to squeeze through. Check out that profile. From the front, the pedestal appears circular. But from the side, you can see how it expands to three times its width. Once the pedestal is expanded, the girls are propelled through the shaft and the pedestal. They ride up sideways to the sheet and audience. Once on top, they each turn to face the audience and flip down the secret panel with their feet, just seconds before the sheet is lowered. As the first girl is being lifted off of the pedestal, Beneath the stage, the second girl is stepping into the cramped elevator. When the sheet is once again raised, the assistant stands up and gets ready for her quick ride. Two burly stagehands grab hold of a steel cable and lie backward onto the floor. The cable runs through a pulley system, which lifts the elevator and sends the girl up through the shaft. Using her hands, she flips open a secret panel on top of the pedestal and climbs out. She quickly stands and gets ready for her appearance, just in time. The same process is repeated for the final assistant.
what some guys won't go through just to get the girls. The magician will now show us a test of the powers of his mind. Keep an eye on the ordinary spoon in his hand. Watch as he concentrates his thoughts on the spoon. Like magic, it begins to melt, bending before our eyes. And there it is, one freshly bent spoon using no tools and no camera tricks. Just the power of mind over matter. Or is it? So did the magician use the power of his mind to cause the spoon to bend? Then prove to us that it's bent for good? Not on your life. Here are the secrets. First of all, the stem of the spoon isn't attached to the bowl. When the magician shows us the solid spoon in his hand, he's really only showing us the bowl of this already bent spoon, concealing the stem behind his fingers. He then takes a loose stem and holds it up next to the bowl, hiding the joint with his fingertips. It appears he has one solid spoon, but here we see that the real stem of the spoon is already bent down and hidden from view. He slowly releases his grip on the joint, causing the loose stem to slip down, appearing to bend. When he takes the spoon from his fingers to show off the bend, he's careful to keep the loose stem hidden inside his left hand and draws our attention to the bent spoon in his right. But we won't let him bend the truth again, now that we know his secret. The magician will now attempt to cheat death with the dramatic test of his superhuman endurance. This is the same experiment that was featured on a live nationwide television broadcast by a street magician who's known for hanging upside down, living underground, and pretending to freeze himself in a giant block of ice. The magician shows the clock and lovely timekeeper who will keep track of his minutes underwater in this giant glass tank. As always, do not attempt this or any of the magician's dangerous illusions or escapes. He is a highly trained professional with a team of safety experts standing by. He has been training with Navy SEALs for the past six months to pull off this feat. He's going to attempt to set a new world's record for holding his breath underwater. To do so, he's learned to expand his lung capacity and slow his breathing by putting himself into a state of suspended animation. This trance-like condition will allow him to stay underwater without gasping for air. He makes his way to stairs that lead to a platform that surrounds the top of the tank. At the ready are two more assistants. They will closely monitor his safety and alert the paramedics if anything goes wrong. He takes a few deep breaths and concentrates on slowing his heart and expanding his lungs. Then plunges into the tank. Hold your breath with him and see how long you can last. He will not come up for air until time is up. He's attached his feet to weights that secure him to the bottom of the tank until he slips into his hyper trance. We'll see how long he can stay in this position. Are you still holding your breath? Note that the tank is definitely filled with water and he's not hiding behind a phony glass wall. The risk of drowning is very real. Nearly a minute has gone by. How many of you have had to take a breath by now? The magician is slowly slipping into his state of relaxed consciousness. That's a minute, 30 seconds. Let's jump ahead one minute. 
the magician is now beginning to show signs of panic. It must be hard to relax underwater in that scary costume. Two minutes, 45 seconds. Anyone still holding their breath? He seems to be releasing some air bubbles from beneath his mask. His assistants are still at the ready in case he needs help. I wonder if he's okay. Another minute has gone by and the magician is still underwater and going into his trance. Some more bubbles escape from the magician's mask. He releases his feet and does the dead man's float inside the tank. Note that his head and face are still underwater. There is no way for him to breathe. His assistants check to make sure he hasn't expired. One of them places her hand on his neck to feel his pulse. The other keeps her hand on his back. By touching a pressure point, she can monitor his body movements for any sudden jerks or contortions that would indicate distress. Outside the warehouse, a mobile hospital has been set up in the event of the worst. Up above, his assistants are still monitoring his movements for signs of struggle. So far, no need to call for the paramedics, who are standing by just out of camera range. He's not left the tank, and there are no camera tricks, but we will jump ahead for the sake of time. The magician is halfway toward his goal. He's past the nine minute mark on the way to 18 minutes plus. The state of super measured breathing and extreme laxation is working, though there is a serious risk of permanent damage if enough oxygen does not reach the brain. However, the assistants don't see any reason to break his trance and pull him out of the water. Another minute has gone by. The magician has not moved a muscle. Let's hope this dead man's float doesn't have deeper implications. Ancient mystics were alleged to hold their breath for days using this same method of corpse-like stillness, though ancient stories are prone to be exaggerated. The current world record is just over 15 minutes. On TV, a certain street magician went for 17. The masked man wants to top that. He's got just over six more minutes to go. Regulating his metabolism by fasting and living in an oxygen-rich environment for the last 24 hours has helped prepare his body for this challenging stunt. His heart is pumping ever so slowly and maintaining his breathless trance. Let's jump ahead again. He's passed 16 minutes now. The goal is now within reach. Can he make it? I don't dare ask if any of you watching have been able to hold your breath this long. I gave up after the first five seconds. Then again, I have the perfect excuse. I get paid to talk about what's going on. But you don't need me to tell you that the magician has not moved. He is suspended in the water in his state of suspended animation. We can see all the way around the tank. Seventeen minutes. He's already beaten the other guy. Let's see how much longer he can go. If, in fact, he's going to make it out alive. Seventeen and a half minutes. Again, this is one shot that had been edited only for time. I can't take much more of this. Another half minute has passed. He's 
beaten the record by a full minute. Will he go for two? He's not making a move. Maybe he doesn't know how long he's been down there. Or maybe he stopped breathing. Eighteen minutes, forty-five seconds. No one can last that long. Ah, he's alive. Get him out. Eighteen minutes, fifty-one seconds. A new world's record. But he struggles to the platform. His body is completely drained of strength. He's gasping for air, barely able to stand under his own power. The assistants appear helpless to offer him support because he's told them in advance that he wants to do it alone. A little wobbly. But there he is. The new world's record holder. Unless, of course, it's just one big trick. How did he do it? It's much easier than he tries to make it appear. Here are the secrets. Cleverly hidden inside this pedestal supporting the clock is the first secret. An oxygen tank. You didn't really think he could hold his breath for that long, did you? The magician enters the tank and secures his feet to the weights. He really is holding his breath. But after a short time, he needs the help of a breathing tube that is concealed under his collar. See? It runs from his collar around his neck to a valve behind his head. Magicians without masks use smaller tubes that are undetectable under the water and behind the glass. At the start of the trick, the tube isn't connected. So how does he get oxygen from the tank? The next secret is concealed by this beautiful assistant. Another tube is hidden in her palm. It runs under her costume, up her arm, and down her back. Tricky little devil. The tube continues down to the oxygen. When the girl is in position on the platform, the tube is carefully hidden from view beneath this pad. It goes through the grating, and along the backside of the water tank. It runs all the way down the tank to the floor, where it eventually connects to the concealed oxygen supply. When the magician rises up in the dead man's float position, he's signaling his assistants that he's running out of air. This is when the girl secretly attaches her tube to the one under his collar. Once it's connected, the assistant operating the clock secretly reaches down and starts the flow of oxygen, allowing the magician to breathe easily under the water. All he has to do is float face down and breathe normally. When the record time is within reach, the girl at the tank turns off the air, signaling to the magician that it's time to come out of the water. The audience thinks the assistants are quickly helping him out of the tank, but from this angle, we can see that the girl is detaching her concealed breathing tube before she gives him a hand. The magician climbs out of the water and throws in some dramatic struggling. His theatrics convince us that he is gasping for air after his punishing ordeal. But it was all one big trick, and we know the secrets. Next time, the masked magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets.